This video shows a Python notebook used to analyze New York City traffic collisions data. New York City provides a great public data website. In this sample, you'll analyze this very rich and interesting data set from the New York Police Department that records over 700,000 accident detail records over the last couple of years, including geolocations, accident causes, vehicle types, and more. In IBM Watson Studio, navigate to the community and filter the content to just notebooks. Search for New York and open the sample notebook. Click Copy, then specify the project and Spark service to use. Then create the notebook. This sample notebook includes the output from the last run. So restart the kernel and clear the output. You can download the dataset by clicking the link in the notebook and following the instructions. Then upload the dataset into your object storage through the files slide out panel in the notebook. Since this file is over 100 megabytes, it could take a few minutes to load. You can use the Insert to Code link to insert a Spark session data frame. The code includes your credentials to access the data programmatically. The rest of the code in this notebook assumes a data frame with the name Collisions. So before running the cell, change the data frame name to Collisions. This function inserts the setup code for the pre-configured Spark context then loads the data into a Spark data frame, which is created using Spark context. The credentials for accessing the CSV file are included in the inserted code. The code also displays the first five rows of the data frame. Since this is such a large data frame, this next cache statement pulls the data set into a cluster-wide in-memory cache, which is useful when data is accessed repeatedly. The next cell displays a count of the number of records. It also shows the inferred schema for the data set. There is temporal, geospatial, contributing factors, and vehicle information. For visualization of the results, this notebook uses matplotlib and seaborn, which are loaded here. This next cell contains code that selects the columns with data that you want to explore. In this case, the latitude, longitude, date, time, borough, and so on. Then it divides the data set into accidents which were fatal and accidents where no one was killed, but people were injured. This statement creates an initial scatter plot showing the vehicle collisions in New York City using only the latitude and longitude of the data. Even with a base map, the accidents are so prevalent across the New York City area that they effectively plot a pretty complete map of the streets of New York. You can recognize Central Park, the location of bridges, and you can see in certain areas the density of the accidents is higher than other parts. It's easy to see that this data may be a very valuable source for further insights. Next, you can incorporate additional information about the borough. This code will create a scatter plot with the color coding for the five boroughs in New York City. For example, the accidents in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Adding the additional information about the borough, you can also compute how many accidents occurred in each borough in the same time frame. The bar graph shows that most accidents happen in Brooklyn, then Queens, then Manhattan, and so on. The unlabeled bar indicates that the data for approximately 40,000 accidents did not include borough information. This code creates a scatter plot incorporating the severity of the incidents. Blue indicates car body damage, yellow for personal injury, and red for fatal accidents. You can see that there are hot spots of fatal accidents in the city, and some distinct patches with personal injury. This insight can help to identify areas where it makes most sense to check and improve street conditions adjust speed limits and signage, or seek other means to make these spots less dangerous. After the first initial plots of the raw data, clean and shape the data into a more convenient format for further analysis. 
Begin by looking at the column names again to better assess which information you can use. The next cell shows a count of the number of entries with valid information about the street and borough. You don't have to run each cell individually. You can select the cell you last ran and choose to run all the cells below. Then you can review all the output. This code normalizes the spatial and temporal information using Spark by organizing the columns and tables to minimize data redundancy. This plot shows the contribution factors that police officers recorded for a vehicle accident. Most of the time it's unspecified, but other factors include distracted driver, failure to yield the right-of-way, or fatigue as the causes of accidents. You can alter this code to show more about contributing factors. The data contains information about the vehicle types involved in accidents. For further analysis, you might want to aggregate that into auto, bus, truck, taxi, or other using Spark. Then factor in the severity, street name, and borough. Then count the number of accidents by car type, severity, street name, and borough that occurred down to the hour. Reshape the data again to plot the 10 most dangerous streets in New York City. This plot shows that Atlantic Avenue, Northern Boulevard, and Broadway are the three streets in New York City with the most accidents. Then you can take this information and combine it with the first scatter plot. This plot shows the map with the 10 most dangerous streets color-coded, Atlantic Avenue, Northern Boulevard, and Broadway. Since performing the data shaping, you can now take information from the data set, such as vehicle type and the hour the accident occurred, and compute the number of accidents throughout the day. Interestingly, you can see that in the evening rush hour, the number of accidents peaks significantly higher than in the morning rush hour. But at nighttime, there are fewer accidents. This plot also shows that most of the accidents are involving automobiles, then taxi, truck, and bus. You can alter the code in this notebook to investigate more patterns and visualize them using Matplotlib. Find more videos in the IBM Watson and Cloud Platform Learning Center.